But rail commuters were not so lucky in 1952 when in thick fog at 7am on May 7, an electric train crashed with terrific impact into the rear of a stationary train at Barella Station, west of Sydney. The collision occurred without warning as the train from Bankstown, loaded with early morning workers, ploughed into the equally crowded stationary train from Liverpool, telescoping the first carriage of the Bankstown train with the end carriage of the train standing at the station. The crash occurred with such force that the stationary train with brakes on was pushed 55 metres along the line. Rescuers immediately on the scene found horrific sights of death and injury. Ten people lost their lives and scores of injured were ferried to hospital. Emergency calls brought a large stream of people to the Red Cross blood bank. Volunteers continued to attend during the day. It was the worst Sydney Metropolitan Rail disaster at the time and it seemed certain that the death toll would have been higher had the carriages not been constructed of steel. Equipment malfunction was blamed for a similar accident near Sydenham in Sydney South just before Christmas the following year. An electric train crowded with workers and people returning home from Christmas shopping in the city stopped at signal lights. A second train, following on the same line, ploughed into the rear of the stationary train, telescoping the carriages of both trains, trapping dead and injured passengers in the wreckage. Wooden carriages were smashed to matchwood while steel carriages were warped and twisted. Again, emergency services were quickly on the scene, with rescuers having to use oxyacetylene torches to free those trapped. Five people died in this catastrophe and over 200 were injured. On February 6, 1969, Australia's then famous glamour train, the Southern Aurora, left Sydney on its scheduled overnight journey to Melbourne. By daybreak the following day, it had passed through Benalla in northern Victoria and was heading south when the driver suffered a heart attack and, unbeknown to anyone on board, died at the controls. The train continued on out of control, crashing head-on into a freight train near Violet Town. Nine people were killed in the collision and more than 50 were injured. The majority of accidents involving trains have occurred at level crossings, particularly in country or outer metropolitan areas. In May 1956, the Bacchus Marsh Melbourne diesel train was involved in a fatal collision with a utility at Deer Park on the western outskirts of the city. The train was travelling at 100 kilometres an hour in heavy rain when the crash occurred. Both the driver and the passenger were killed instantly as the crushed driving cabin of the utility was dragged, wedged under the front bogey of the train for more than 220 metres. In 1957, a semi-trailer laden with cement crashed into a rail car at a level crossing near Ungara in South Australia. The rails were twisted and bent with the force of the impact, but fortunately it was the empty carriage behind the rail car that was hit. None of the 30 passengers travelling aboard the rail car itself were injured. Only the 31-year-old driver of the semi-trailer was killed, and the vehicle itself was a total wreck. In Queensland, nine people died and 23 were injured when three carriages of the Midlander Express plunged through a wooden bridge at Bogentungen between Longreach and Rockhampton in February 1960. The bridge, weakened by debris in the flooded Midway Creek, collapsed after the train's locomotive had passed across safely. The generator car and three sleeping carriages lay twisted in the creek where at least three of the victims drowned, trapped in the wreckage. But the worst rail disaster in Australia's history occurred on January 18, 1977 when the crowded 6.09am commuter train from Mount Victoria in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales crashed at Granville in Sydney's west. The train had just left Parramatta and was rounding the bend into Granville at 8.13am when its electric locomotive left the rails and hit a support of the overhead road bridge, collapsing the concrete and steel bridge down on top of carriages three and four. The weight of the bridge compressed the carriages and those passengers inside to within half a metre of the carriage floor. News of the disaster soon spread 
precipitating the largest response of emergency services that New South Wales has ever seen. Eighty-three people died at Granville, and many more still carry the physical and emotional scars of Australia's most horrific rail disaster. 